everyone, my name is E-House. And I'm Amy. And welcome to another episode of Speed Sim. So today we're going to be talking about something that actually kind of recently affected River City mm -hmm. and is affecting more fields around the country from what we've been seeing. Uh, and even talking to some of the rep reps at uh, SHOT Show. Exactly. Yeah, this was a conversation that came up. I'm mm -hmm. surprised we waited this long to do this video. Yeah. We're stupid sometimes. We don't think of things all the time. Yeah. Um, but the subject of today's video is about more and more fields requiring full face protection. You know, if you have been playing long enough, or really if you've been playing at, at different all. fields at all, uh, you'll remember that there's a lot of fields out there that will let you get away with just wearing eye protection. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, even if you see in the UK, yeah, they can get away with wearing shooting glasses. UK. Yeah, that's... Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, we have our own different attitudes about that, but that's what they're allowed to do. Uh, so here, uh, but here at like River City, for example, or at Buffalo Battleground, or at uh, like a, a number of other fields. Oh, Rochester Airsoft. Right? Rochester Airsoft, yep. yep. Uh, all of those fields require full, hard face protection. Like a balaclava doesn't work. Like You need to have it has to be mesh. Hard. Yeah. Something very tangible, nothing soft and malleable, because, you know, things can happen. Yeah, so, but this is kind of something that's been coming up more recently in the yep. airsoft industry. More new fields are immediately coming out the gate, having to have full, hard face protection, mm -hmm. and your insurance uh, just la was a year or two years ago. It was last year, I want to yeah, say. Yeah, last, last year. year. Yeah, they started requiring. Um, well, it wasn't that they started. They kind of mentioned to us because they're the, the clause of of insurance is mm -hmm. very hard to read if you're not like around all this stuff a lot, and it's hard for us to dictate what they actually mean. And they kind of flat out told us everyone should have a full face mask, and we you know kind of talk them down and be like, hey, can like your goggles and lower face mesh work? And they're mm -hmm. like, okay, that's fine. But realistically, they would like everybody to wear a full face mask, like the Die 4s or the uh, Velcan MI5s or anything like that. Yeah, any of the paintball masks. Yeah. But they do, at the base at least, require the hard face protection. Yes. And that's kind of been a growing trend. It's definitely, yeah. I mean, even my first experience was uh, SC Village when I, I was fully aware that we needed full face protection, <laughs> but... I wasn't, I don't know the extent to how far that bridged over. So all I did was I grabbed some, my, um, what was it? My flat jacks and I got those lower face mesh that everybody wears. Yeah. yeah and yeah. that was fine. And you also needed ear protection, something hard shell, which that was. Yeah. That was new at the time. That was definitely new. And I mean, it's not uncommon nowadays. So, I mean, that was my first interaction. Yeah. I think my first, um, I mean, my first field that required full hard face protection was probably uh, Buffalo Battleground. Yeah. Because that was, uh, you know, a new indoor field that came and opened up, and they immediately out the gate required full face protection. And that was kind of, at the time, a little different. I know back when Penyan was open, uh, they wanted you to have full face protection, but they would let you get away with, like, a Shemag yeah. or a Balaclava. Same with Ground, uh, Ground Zero in Connecticut. They want you to have a Shemag or a Balaclava, but that's not quite the same. Yeah. Um, but then ever since then, you know, River City started out, the insurance didn't quite require it, so, yeah. Uh, so it just became a bigger trend where more and more places started requiring it. And the reason why this is, is kind of a fascinating insurance question, which I wish we had Kyle here. We might just do a whole separate video on insurance by itself. But I think more and more fields are coming to realize two things. Uh, number one, insurance companies are realizing that Airsoft will damage teeth, and that dental payouts are expensive. Oh my god, yes. So, yeah, I mean, having teeth replaced at the cost of the field, which you could sign a waiver, but that's a video unto itself why waivers are about as effective as that piece of paper Ned Stark hands Cersei Lannister. Uh, so, uh, so you need to have some real actual protection that the players are required to wear on their end. And then if they get hurt, you can say, oh, well, it was the player's fault for not having the protective gear. And then the other thing I think that has happened is, and I don't think this is something that's changed. I just think this is something that the way it's been handled has been changed. A lot of kids play airsoft. Yes. It's, got, it's been more predominant now mm -hmm. that these past 10 years. Yeah, a it, lot of more kids have gotten in. It, I mean, at first because well, the cost of entry is lower it, now, definitely much lower. I mean, you got the combat machines, you even have Lancer Tacticals, which are really dirt cheap. So I mean, you can get in super cheap in the game. 
So literally anybody could jump in. So insurance is definitely like, you got to protect the kids. Yeah. Think of the children. Well, and the field owners, I think, even are more open to that too because even if the insurance doesn't necessarily explicitly require full face i mean nobody wants to get sued by an angry parent exactly and also if you get a kid going onto your field and they get shot in the face a bunch and they go back to their parents looking like they've had an early super acne breakout and by the way it also really hurts yeah you're gonna lose customers that way definitely so i think that uh those two factors are probably the main contributors right but uh, more personal though, I think wearing a full face mask in general is just a good idea. I mean, you want to protect your face. I mean, this is the thing that you show every single day. Why would you want it ruined because of a sport? I don't know. This doesn't make sense to me. I had my first scare a couple of years ago and I had a tooth, uh, a BB caught in my mouth. And that scared me. I'm like, okay, nope, we're doing full face mask. This is it. I can't. It's very scary. It was super scary. I still don't wear it when it's not required, but you know what? I've gotten a lot more used to wearing my dye mask, so yeah. it's... Uh, I do love the dye mask. That is really good. We've obviously we've, talked about talked that on video many times. times. But that's, I think it's always a good idea, though. And that's the other thing. I think face protection is better than it's ever been. Oh, yeah. Because there it's was come a, a long way. There was a time when wearing face protection was actually a huge pain in the ass, but it, I mm -hmm. would argue that with the dye masks being way more prevalent, way more available, and that with the One Tigress foldable mesh masks, I don't think there's been a better time for face protection. One Tigress even has their small version that's great for kids or for women with smaller faces or anyone with a smaller face, really. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the other thing, too. I think even as face protection just continues to get better, I think it's kind of a cycle where more fields require face protection, face protection gets better. And then as more fields require face protection, face protection continues to get better. And then mm -hmm. Brain Exploder has 3D printed ear covers yep. that are really good uh, for their purpose. So even that's getting better. And then you've got the Opsman headsets that give people way more affordable communication and ear protection solutions that have been available in a long time uh, that are actually decent, I should say. The ZTACs have always been cheap, but terrible. Uh, real quick plug, even the Dye-5s are a little bit longer and bigger. So, I mean, like, yep. like you said, they get better over time. And they've got the dials on the back so oh, you yeah. can secure them. So, I mean, there's no better time to get into the full face protection if you haven't already. I know it's not super military and, you know, your immersions are a little bit destroyed, but, I mean, at what cost, though? I would even say that, you know, having just, like, a balaclava or something over your face, I mean... You know, again, I kind of sound like a hypocrite because you'll see me on the field without face protection if it's not required yeah. constantly. Definitely a hypocrite. I, I know, uh, but <laughs> I am going to say that it's really not a bad idea if you just want to put like a ball of clover on your face because even that'll protect your teeth. Yeah, for I the mean, most part. you'll I mean, still get a welt and you'll still feel the impact, but the BB is not going to go through like a decent microfiber ball of clover or something. Like five hundred at point blank range, but well, you know. Yes, but you're <laughs> hoping that everyone's within the field limits. Because mm -hmm. uh, I remember I was at Bad Blood and I got shot in the face a couple of times, but uh, the rules there were that you had to have some kind of face coverage, and I had it, and it worked. So there you go. I mean, personally, I would just always wear it regardless, unless. Like you go to like a Milsom, event, a Milsom West event where they kind of don't like that kind of stuff. Well, they like it. But they don't mind if you have uh, mesh and they don't mind if you have balaclava. But they do okay, just, they don't want you to wear paintball masks yep. and they do want you to look military because Milsom West is really LARPing yes. more than anything else. So, you know, you're expected to look the part. Right. But, you know, aside from that, it's always a good day, especially if you go to, like, your local indoor field or CQB outdoor range. Because those are so uh, tight-knit, close-quarter battles that you should always have something on your face completely covering. Because you never know that rando renter comes around the corner just blasting the face and it's going to be over for you. <laughs> Yeah, definitely at any indoor CQB field or any, like, here at River City, anything like that. Whether it's required or not, I'm probably just going to wear my dye mask forever there. Yeah. Uh, it's only, like, at large outdoor fields that you'll see me change that. But yeah. definitely have face protection. And as we explained, there's a reason why more insurance companies and why more fields are requiring it. So... It's just the way of the future. The thing's just going to eventually become, you know, you're going to always have to wear it. You can't get out of it unless you go to large-scale Milsom events. Yep. So I guess in summary, the reason face protection is becoming more prevalent, more fields are requiring it, more insurance companies are requiring it, 
more people are getting shot in the face and deciding their teeth aren't worth the risk. Yep. And face protection has never been better. So I think we covered it. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for watching another episode of Speed Sim. Once, once again, my name was Amy. And I'm E House. And thanks for watching, guys. And we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. I have a kind of a funny story now that you mentioned that is, uh, I don't know if I've told this on camera before, but it's really funny, so I hope you enjoy it. I come around a corner one time, this is at, um, this is at another field, and I come around a corner and someone is startled and surprised and they bring their gun up and they're shooting as they bring oh, it up, and I catch three BB, this was not at like a super long distance or else the story would be much more painful, I think it was 20 feet, okay. um, and I catch one, two, three, and a BB goes right in my mouth and hits my tongue. Ooh. Yeah, so it hits my tongue and like bounces around in my mouth a little bit and then I end up spitting it out. And this guy, from his perspective, this must have been ridiculous because I immediately just spit out a bloody BB with like a bunch of blood with it because my tongue's bleeding and I'm just laughing hysterically because I'm just thinking what a crazy one in a million shot that this goes between my teeth right onto my tongue, and then I just spit it out, and I just laugh my ass off at this guy saying, I'm so sorry, are you okay? And I'm just laughing, I'm like, that's fucking hilarious. And he's just, he doesn't even know what to do or think, and I just call my head and I go back to respawn. I'm sure you screwed the crap out of him. Oh my god, it was so funny. And I, uh, I hopped on the radio, and this was actually, uh, this was, if you've been to an AMS game, and you know Yuck, the leader of Cost, um, he was an, he's an admin of the field. It was the war zone. The war zone airsoft battlefield is where it was at. Uh, this was, I don't know how long ago this was. And I call on the radio. I say, hey, I'm going to take a minute at respawn. I got shot on the tongue. And he says back, he says, yeah, that's what happens when you let people put their balls in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one way. Oh, my that's God. I, I don't know. That was just a funny story I thought of when you mentioned that. I hope you all enjoyed it. Did that make you think twice about face protection? Um, you know, it didn't make me think hard enough.